Hi, this is Jay Goodison. This video is an accompaniment to a blog post we've recently released on the Flow Community blog to talk about how you can use the Microsoft's Cognitive Services API um, to perform text analytics uh, analysis even on a document and extract key phrases from that document, which we can then uh, later use to upload against the document as metadata within SharePoint. So um, obviously what we're going to try to do in this video is show you how to create the flow. I'm just going to click create from blank and we're going to use a SharePoint trigger action um, to kick things off. So in essence, what we're going to do is look for when a file is um, either created or modified, we want to capture that event and handle it. So, yep, thanks. Got that. Uh, let's choose a site. Let's choose a library. And let's find a folder that we're going to work with. So let's scroll down here. Share documents. I did some prep. <laughs> so hopefully we've got a folder called text analytics demo. Right. So what we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to watch for any file that's going to be modified or created uh, in that particular folder in SharePoint. And then we're going to um, submit that document for analysis and extract those key phrases. Right. So the first step uh, um, on actual configuration of the actions within the flow uh, beyond the trigger, uh, we're going to create a new variable which we will later use to hold the value of the key phrases. So I'll call it key phrases, nice and simple. Um, that's going to be a type string. And I'm going to add another variable. Now this variable I'm going to use to store another string. Um, and I'm going to use it to store the email address of the account, which I'm going to use in the connection to update the SharePoint item later on. Now that may seem a little, uh, bear me two seconds, that may seem a little bit strange, but I'll explain why. This flow will be triggered by a document being updated in SharePoint or created for that matter. If we then um, analyze that document using text, uh, uh, the text uh, analysis to get the key phrases, we are then going to write the data we've returned from text analysis and apply it to the same SharePoint document. That's going to create an infinite loop um, or a recursive event. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to set the, the action that updates the document in SharePoint. I'm going to set it to use a very specific connection, which uses a service account identity. And what we're going to now do is add a condition to the flow that says if the update to the document is the service account, then don't do anything. So in that way, we can stop the recursive event. So as uh, me as the person who's created the flow, obviously, or any of the user that's, that's uh, working with the flow, they can update the document and be confident that this flow isn't going to recursively execute because it will check for the flow identity updating the document. And if so, do nothing. So let's, let's add that control in. And we'll go for a condition. And we're going to say if the modified by email, if we find that, there we are, is not equal to the service account, <clears throat> then we'll do something. So we're now going to add or kind of continue the uh, configuration of the flow in this branch here to say yes. So the first. Um, First action is to go and get the file from SharePoint. So we'll do get file content, SharePoint. Uh, have I gone past it? There it is. Apologies, been a bit slow there. And we'll pass in the identifier of the uh, of the file that we got from the trigger action. So let's just scroll down here and we should see the identifier. There we go. Okay, so the next uh, action I'm going to add, um, I'm going to use the encoding connector to um, to convert the file that I've retrieved from SharePoint to PDF format, which may seem a little bit odd, but I will explain why. So let's just add the action convert to PDF. There we go. To send the um, 
require data to the text analytics API, we need to get um, a text representation of the document. And the easiest way to do that is to convert the document um, that we've retrieved from SharePoint to um, to a PDF and then we can extract the text layer from that PDF document. So I'm just going to pass in the file contents to convert PDF action there. Um, I'm going to choose the file name with extension parameter for both of these. Um, let's just click see more so we can make sure we can see it. There we go, file name with extension and again see more. File name with extension. So I'm going to pass both of the, uh, the file name into the both the file name and PDF file name uh, fields. Um, that may seem a little bit odd because that could be a docx powerpoint or an xlx but i know what this um, action behind the scenes will do it'll automatically pick that up and change it to a pdf extension so that's fine um i'm next going to add um, another action to actually go and obtain the text layer so we should have a action here which enables me to get the text layer so yeah get pdf text layer um again i'm going to pass in the file name of the file and I'm going to pass in the file content this time of the converted to the result of the convert to PDF action which is the PDF document um, and at that point we are we've retrieved the document for SharePoint we've converted it to PDF um, and obviously that could be any particular file format the convert to PDF action there supports I think 75 plus different types of files so we've got quite a lot of coverage there um, and we've got a text layer from that document. So the next thing we need to do is actually pass this to uh, the text analytics action. So let's, let's go do a search for that action that we're interested in. Hopefully that's come up. Let's bear with that for a moment. Uh, there we go, text analytics. So we're interested in, there are a few different ones here, but we're going to use the uh, text analytics um, key phrases action. So let's select that. Um, and you can see here that there's a parameter asking for the text to analyze and we're simply going to pass the text layer that's re uh, returned from the git pdfx text layer action okay so um if you haven't already created a connection uh, for text analytics um there's some um links in the, in the blog post that show you how to um a go and create a, a azure subscription you'll need one of those to host an instance of the text analytics api um, and there's some documentation also about the text analytics api and how you go and create those as well um, and in the blog post there are some specific steps as well if you haven't already created a connection how to create the connection i have so i'm, I'm not going to create a new one um, but if you're if you are creating a connection it's pretty simple you give it a connection name an API key that can be obtained from the instance of your text analytics um, instance in, in the Azure portal, and obviously the endpoint URL, which can be obtained from the same place. And that, that's basically what forms that connection. Now, um, what I'm gonna do, the key phrases action gives back uh, a list of phrases in essence, but what I wanna do is put those into a particular format. So I want a comma delimited list. So to do that, I'm gonna set a variable that we created earlier on and so I'm going to append to it so append to string variable and I'm going to choose the key phrases variable we created at the start and in the value I'm going to click key phrases item now what this should do hopefully and it has is create and apply to each loop now if I just put that in as it is I'll basically get all of the key phrases joined together, which is exactly what I don't want. I want to create a comma delimited list. So I'm going to use a, a really simple concat expression. And I've got it over here somewhere that I'm just going to copy across so that I don't get it wrong. Here we go. All right, so let me just select that. Thank you. I've got it, I think. Uh, in the expression, I'll just copy and paste that in here. And you can see get the value from the apply to each and I'm simply going to concat the value and a comma on the end in a space so they should uh, effectively become a comma delimited uh, set of phrases in a single string so that's the idea click OK so the final step is to update the um, is to update the SharePoint document so let's go and find the update file properties action There we go. Uh, we're going to choose the same site address, uh, which is PDF demo. We're going to choose the same 
library name, documents, and we're going to pass in the ID of the trigger action. So that's the ID of the original document, which has been updated. Um, I have created a key phrases text column on the SharePoint library where I can pass in that data. Obviously, if you've got data in a different format or you want to write it with a slightly different field, you'll need to update your variables and your manipulation, however that may suit. But for me, I've got a string. It's a key delimited list of key phrases, and I'm going to pass that into the key phrases field. So just select that. Okay. Now, earlier on, I mentioned that... Um, the, the, connect, the, the last action that updates um, the SharePoint document, I was going to make it use a particular connection. So if I just click here, you'll see that I've got two different connections. It's defaulted to use the J Goodison account, which is me. I don't want it to do that. I want it to use the O365 services connection. So there we go. That's, that's now saved. And you can see that's set to use the O365 services connection. And that just means, as we talked about earlier on, that when we when we... Uh, evaluate this condition control will say that if it is equal to the service account then please do not continue to run which stops the recursive events okay so at this point we're ready to test so i'm just going to save the flow and i'm going to need to perform the trigger action so let's click test uh i'll perform this trigger action because it's a brand new flow save and test and we'll just jump over to sharepoint here and we'll upload a document so let's click upload and we'll choose the Encodian test document. Now, what I'm expecting to happen is this will actually um, cause an error within the flow. So let's watch that run through. And the reason for that is I suspect that the amount of content that I'm trying to send to the text analytics API is too much. So yeah, okay. So yes, we can see the errors in apply to each, but actually the errors occur occurred in key phrases. So if I look in here, um, we'll see there's a body and it's saying there is an error and the message is a document with the request was too large. Um, you need to keep the limit between five, uh, five, sorry, 5,120 characters. Okay. Now this could be seen as a limitation, I guess. Well, seen it is a limitation and it's something that needs to be managed. Um, I know a few, um, uh, colleagues I've chatted to with and contacts I've chatted with have said, well, why, why, why don't you loop through each page within the document? Um, and send that for analysis. And I think, yes, you could do that, but of course the um, analysis is done on a per page basis, not a document, which could actually skew results about what the key phrases in the document are. My personal recommendation is that you find um, some areas of the document, if it's a particular template, that you know is gonna hold the key information. Could it be the table of contents? Could it be the executive summary? And try and pull the data from those areas of the document. Um, to, to aid that, we have in the Git PDF text layer um, action, there is the option to st specify a start and end page. So I'm just going to specify the, let's just do pages two to three. And let's try that again. And now this time, obviously, we, we're hopefully getting a subset. So um, that should be below the threshold and we should be able to run the flow. So let's just try again. And we'll see how we get on. Now, hopefully, if I click on key phrases now, yep, yeah, okay, so that's that that's run successfully, and we can see that those key phrases have actually been brought back. And and what's happening now is that that loops, it's going through that loop, um, it's building up that that uh, common delimited string for us, and that should apply that to the SharePoint document. So once that's finished, we'll jump over to SharePoint and just check that that key phrases field has been set correctly. Um, there we go. Uh, jump over to SharePoint and we can see those key phrases have been set on the document. Excellent. Okay, so that, that concludes the configuration of the flow. Um, if you need some extra details, obviously, please check out the blog post as well. Um, if you're struggling or have any other questions or any other questions about other use case scenarios for Cognitive Services API, please post them to the, the community. There's, there's lots of experts on there who will be able to help out. Um, of course, I'll be one of those um, people, not necessarily experts, who will be picking up those posts and helping where I can as well. Um, but I do, you know, please check out the Cognitive Services. There's some really great stuff in there that can be done to build some really innovative solutions. We've recently worked on a project where we're um, taking um, documents out of 
documents within SharePoint um, and use the um, Cognitive Services API, specifically the Speech API that you can see here. And we've used um, those services to create some audio files from text um, for accessibility reasons. So there's loads of different stuff. Again, please please go, go onto the Azure website, have a look around, check out the vision, speech, language, etc. cetera, um, those different um, capabilities. And um, yeah, hopefully there's some interesting um, services that you can build into your Flow solutions.